Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jasmine Sepulveda, and today I will be presenting to you a viable option for further education. I'd like to start off today's presentation with a story. The story of a girl who grew up in the United States of America reaping the benefits of her educational system. She came to the United States at the age of three and grew up in an ever-growing community and an ever-changing educational system. When she entered high school, she was presented with the opportunity of becoming a duly enrolled college student with a community college. Because of this opportunity, she's able to graduate at the age of 18 with her full high school diploma as well as an associate's degree in education. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my story. This is why I have the honor and the privilege of presenting to you today's topic, community college. So, what is a community college? A community college is an affordable post-graduation plan funded by taxpayer dollars for students. The highest degree is usually an associate's degree, but many community colleges also offer certificates and some even offering a bachelor's degree. Community colleges also have something called transferable credit. These are college credit hours that can be transferred to a four-year college or university. Let's talk about the basics. There's three very important things that community colleges do for their students. One, they build community. Obviously, it's in the name, community college. Two, they build collaboration. And three, they fuel economies. Let me tell you why. If you take a look at this map, you're able to see the average cost of a college tuition for a regular college. If we take a look at South Carolina, we're able to see that it's little less than $23,000. If we compare it to this map, which showcases the average cost for in-state tuition for a community college, and take a look at South Carolina, we can see that it's a little bit more than $4,500. That's a difference of almost $17,500 a student could be saving in college tuition. If that alone doesn't catch your eye, then I don't know what will. Let's talk about the pros and cons. On your left, you can see a map that showcases how many community colleges are currently available in each state. Every single one of these community colleges offer internships for their students that build social capital, they build experience, and of course, they build community. Because of these internships at community colleges, they're given lots of opportunities. The most important one being that it's impacting the real world. The education system and corporate America are moving at two different paces, but when students are able to enter a community college and enter in one of these internships, they're able to see how education systems in corporate America are overlapping. They're also given the opportunity to gain degrees or just certificates in their designated program of study, and they're opening their eyes to many hidden job markets that they didn't even know existed in the first place. Let's talk about the offering. 90% of community colleges offer a finance program of study, while only 40% of community colleges offer a workforce development program of study. Additionally, many community colleges also offer mentorship from their, for their students. This comes from a Latin word or sentence that is menti o mentor. This basically means that it's from students for students. This is where students who have graduated their program of study can mentor a student who is entering that same program of study, and the student who has already graduated and becoming that mentor can gain up to $60,000 in college tuition for transferable colleges or universities. Let's talk about the not so fun stuff, or the cons. There's a quote that I really like. It's, you don't know what we don't know. And that basically means that if the community colleges is unable to offer the program of study that the student wants, then of course they're not gonna be able to succeed in that specific program of study. Some community colleges do offer that program of study, but they might only be limited to certificates. They don't offer degrees to be transferred to four-year colleges or universities. As well as time availability, some community colleges, their programs can be finished in half a year, while some take up to three years to complete. And that can be very difficult because some students are working while also getting their education. Program requirements are also different for every program of study that the student chooses, with the most important requirements being that the student is maintaining a 3.0 GPA through the entirety of their course, and they can usually only miss about 10% of each course, and each course lasts between 8 to 16 weeks, meaning they can usually only miss about 2 to 4 days of class. Now let's talk about a high school option. 
option for students. Abraham Lincoln said that the best way to predict your future is to create it, and I wholeheartedly agree. That's why I began today's presentation with my story and how I've been impacted by community college. So dual enrollment, also known as college entrance, is when high school students are given the same benefits as a first year college student. That means they're able to use any of the amenities or resources provided at the community college, and they're able to enter any of the program of studies presented at that community college. They're also given academic coaching and tutoring because, well, they're both a full-time high school student and a full-time college student, and that can be very mentally strained. There's three programs of study that the high school student can enter. The first one being a modified middle college, the second one being a middle college, and the third one being an early college. Modified middle college is where high school students are taking high school courses in a college building or environment. The goal is that by their graduation or senior year, they have taken at least one hour of college credit. Middle college is where high schoolers are completing all required credits for their high school diploma, as well as taking 10 to 25 hours of college credit before graduation. The requirements to enter this program of study differ from all schools and high schools, but the three main important ones are that they have teacher recommendations from their high school student, from their high school teachers, pardon. They also have college admissions applications that are completed and accepted by that community college, as well as ideas of a post-graduation plan. Early college is similar to middle college, the only difference being that the high school student is completing 30 to 60 hours of college credit, meaning or that adds up to about a full certificate or a full degree in their program of study. The only difference in requirements is that high school students are maintaining a 3.0 GPA or higher in their high school classes as well as in their college classes, and that they have a clear plan for post-graduation, not just an idea. Let's look at the graduation rate from a single high school that I was able to get some data on in South Carolina. 85% of the dually enrolled graduating class of 2022 graduated with at least one hour of college credit, while only 13% of the graduating class of 2022 graduated with 50 to 59 hours of college credit, meaning that 13% of the high school, of the senior class of 2022 graduated with their high school diploma as well as a certificate or degree in their program of study. Let's listen to some stories from current students. This is Nancy Onessi, and let's listen to her story. I'm looking to get my associate's degree in science. I'm really looking forward to just a new community of people in a new classroom setting. It was local, it just made a lot of sense to do, and a lot of my family did it, and it just seemed like a really efficient way to get a degree too. I would recommend it because it's just a really good way to get all your credits really quickly and it's a lot more rewarding, especially after you graduate. It's really good for furthering your education. And this is Caitlin Austendorf. She says that it's been really, really cool getting to walk around campus during breaks between classes and see what a college experience would be like. I completely agree with that statement. In conclusion, community colleges build passion, they accommodate for their students, they're definitely an affordable option for students looking for it for their education, and they impact their communities greatly. That's why I believe community college is a viable option for further education. I'd like to thank everyone for their time and attention. Here's a list of the resources from where I've gotten most of my information from, and I'd like to open the floor for any questions.